This video will talk about subclavian artery stenosis, or narrowing or blockages of the arteries supplying blood to the arms. This is the angiologist, I'm Dr. Ido Weinberg, and let's get going. First things first, what is subclavian artery stenosis anyway? Well, the word stenosis means narrowing, so subclavian artery stenosis basically means narrowing of the blood flow in these arteries that are called the subclavian arteries. These are arteries that are located at the upper part of our chest. They originate from the aorta, the main blood vessel coming out of the heart, and they supply blood to our arms. What happens over the years, fat, calcium, inflammation, deposit in the walls of these arteries, gradually making them more and more narrow, and that narrowing is actually the stenosis, the subclavian artery stenosis. One risk factor to talk about specifically is tobacco abuse or smoking of cigarettes and such. Tobacco is known to be a risk factor for, uh, for uh, subclavian artery stenosis, together with other risk factors such as high blood pressure and such as high cholesterol. People who have these risk factors are at greater risk of developing these narrowings in the arteries and are at greater risk for the reduced blood flow to the arms, sometimes with symptoms. Most people with subclavian artery stenosis won't have any symptoms at all. They may either not know about it at all, or it may be diagnosed because they had imaging of their chest or their arteries for some other reason. But sometimes we go looking for subclavian artery stenosis. The most common reason for that would be if we measure blood pressure in both arms and we see that it's different. Some difference between uh, blood pressure measurements in, in the arms is very normal. But as the number grows, typically beyond 10 points or 15 or even 20 points, we should suspect that there's a narrowing, a reduced blood flow to the lower side. We actually made another video about that and you can check it out right here if you want to. Other ways to suspect it is if the arm starts hurting when you're trying to do something. So when we want to do something, we need more blood supply to the arm. If we work the arm and it asks for more blood and it's not receiving enough blood, it may ache like a sore muscle and that should make you suspect subclavian artery stenosis. In severe cases, one of the next two things can happen. First of all, if there's really not enough blood reaching the arm or the hand, the hand itself could change color. It could become white or blue from lack of oxygen. It could hurt even when you're not doing anything. And the second type of uh, severe symptom is when the blood flow to the arm is uh, severely narrowed. So the arm is, is effectively kind of sucking away blood from the brain. The back part of the brain will not have enough blood and every time a person tries to use their arms, they may either feel dizzy or in some cases even drop. They could just faint when they're actually trying to use their arms because blood will be sucked away from the brain. The main treatment for subclavian artery stenosis is going to be medicine. The medicine needs to target that plaque I was talking about. So if the cause of the narrowing is plaque and we want to make sure that the plaque doesn't grow anymore, we should address the plaque. So. In order to do that, we need to target the reasons that caused the plaque in the first place. Like I said, smoking is one of the major reasons. So if a person continues to smoke, chances are the narrowing will become worse over time. The second factor we want to address is the fat. As I said, fat also deposits in the plaque, right? So statins, medications such as atorvastatin, also known as Lipitor, or Rizuvastatin, also known as Crestor, and others, they target the what's called bad cholesterol or the LDL cholesterol, reducing it and by that reducing the chance of more plaque accumulating in your artery. If a person has elevated blood pressure, it's important to normalize the blood pressure, but there's a, an important caveat here, which is you need to use the correct arm to determine if the patient has uh, an elevated blood pressure. So you need to use the higher of the two, not the side with the narrowing, but rather the other side to determine if the blood pressure is indeed elevated or not. Some people with subclavian artery stenosis are going to require procedures, intervention. Typically, those are going to be those people who have symptoms. People who suffer from arm pain when they're trying to do something, and definitely people who have the more severe symptoms, will need uh, um, invasive therapy. They'll need a procedure to help with the symptoms. Nowadays, most of the procedures are done what's called through endovascular procedures. This means that a catheter can be threaded to the area of the narrowing, a balloon can be used to open up the narrowing, and other tools can be used as well to keep the narrowing from closing uh, up again. Sometimes that's either that either fails or it just can't be done, and then a surgical bypass is required where blood is brought from a normal artery to bypass the blockage and supply blood uh, beyond the blockage to the rest of the arm. 
So subclavian artery stenosis, narrowing of blood flow to the arms, usually caused by plaque, usually caused by tobacco, cholesterol, hypertension, and such. Treatment is usually with medicine, mainly statins, but oftentimes also we need to stop smoking and target uh, high blood pressure. Remember to measure blood pressure in both arms. Some people are going to need procedures, those people are the ones with the more severe symptoms of tired arms with activity, discoloration of the hand, and or symptoms of lack of blood flow to the brain when they're using their hands. I hope you enjoyed this video. It really helps us when you like and share and comment and subscribe. So please do that and I hope to see you in the next video.